Let's run the heydb shell command to access the Linux shell on our target device. We can see that we are running as a none root user because of the question mark symbol. Let's run ID. We can see that the UID is shell and it is an alias to the 2000 UID. We can also see that the GUID is shell for the executing process. This process also belongs to these groups. All these are part of the discretionary access control, or DAC, that is built into the Linux kernel. When we are running the ls-l command, we can also see that Linux files and folders belong to different UIDs and GIDs. Some files and folders have question marks, instead of meaningful text. We will need to ask you to see the full list of files and folders without the question marks. We can see that the init environ RC file has a root UID and a shell GID. We can also see its size and when it was last modified. Let's go over the permission slots for that file. We actually know it is a file because the first slot is empty. If it had an L, it would have been a link. The next three slots are saved for the UID, which in this case is root. The second slot is for the red permission and basically allows root to see that file's content. The third slot is for the write permission and allows root to change that content of the file. The fourth slot is for the execute permission, which allows root to execute that file. The next three slots are read, write and execute permissions for the GID, which in this example is shell. Because the sixth slot is dash instead of W, it indicates that any process with a GID of shell can't change the init environment or C file, but can read or execute it. The last three slots are for all others that are not part of the UID and the GID. For directories, the number right after the permissions slots prints out the count of the internal objects. For files, the number is always 1. But for directories, the number is at least 2. That is because the count includes the current directory and the parent directory. So empty directories have always 2 as the object count. Let's see the data directory attributes. The R permission is for seeing the list of objects in that directory. The W permission is for who can create objects in that directory. And the X permission is for who can go into that directory. Because the shell user does not have system in its groups it treated as all others by the DAC security layer. And it would use the last three permission slots to allow or not allow operations. So the shell user can access the data directory but gets a permission denied error when trying to access the directory's content. Additionally, missing a write permission would prevent all non-system UIDs from creating a file in that directory. Because the data folder has all the permissions enabled for that system UID, we can SU as system. Run ID to see that the UID for the system user is 1000. We can now run the same ls command again and validate that it works. We can also create a file in that data directory. The discretionary access control is only the first step of allowing or not allowing an operation like the cat command to be invoked on a file object.